Hello and welcome to another episode of The Adventure Rider. Today we will be talking about um, drama, character death, and generally background flavor and other things that you can add to your adventures. Now why are these things important? Um, I just want to start with a little bit of a story, a background story if, if you may. Um, where I basically started writing adventures with Kelfasil's Tales and I remember distinctly that some creators, when I told them, when I sold them actually, some of my first adventures like Tower of the Starlight Night, um, Esteemed House of Cats, Esteemed House of Cats is actually going to be referenced a lot here and I will explain why. When I sold them my adventures, they said, you're writing too much background, Kelf, nobody's going to read. And that is actually a thing, a lot of people don't read a lot of the stuff that you write in your adventures, especially when you make a PDF that is full of so much background. But nonetheless, they said specifically that you're not going to sell much if you're going to post things with so much background. People don't want to read so much background, they just want to read about the dungeons and the encounters and whatnot and just play the game. And I felt a bit bad, and I actually did go about changing my adventures a little bit, but not too much. I still love the part where I added a lot of background for the story, beginning it, and also a lot of, a lot of background for each NPC, like an actual reason why they're there, why they're doing things, who they are. I actually have like the, the full thing where I, I will talk about in a future episode how I actually write NPCs and why it is so important, but let's say that this episode is kind of like a beginning to it, like kind of an intro to that. So anyway, lo and behold, a few months passed and actually the first people that actually started supporting me, uh, supporting me on Patreon literally came to me and said, they messaged me and said, I love the background that you put in your stories, Kelf. And I was like, wow, they actually, people actually really care about that stuff, you know, I should continue doing it. This is, this is amazing. And kind of a reminder real quick, like in between while we're talking about narrative design, always do what you really love. Like, if you love to enjoy stories with heavy narrative design and you want to create something that you think you would enjoy, you should do that. You should definitely do that. I always create adventures that I think I would enjoy playing as well. Not because I wrote the story, but because if somebody else wrote a story that had this much depth, I would absolutely love it. Which is why I enjoy a lot of TTRPGs just like that have this kind of thing. Like, for example, um, Vampire the Masquerade or Tales from a Loop and whatnot. So anyway, moving forward. Now that I said that, I tend to advertise a lot of my adventure writing as full of drama and uh, mystery and suspense and whatnot. Now why do I say that? Because I really believe that when we are doing narrative design for adventures, it is really important to take into account how we're going to hook the players. And I'm not just saying about fancy dragons and caves and whatnot and fancy loot. Yes, those are all fantastic. You can go to a thousand, thousand other people that create fantastic art with little to no background to them, yeah, sometimes a lot of background. I'm not going to say like, you know, that none of them have background, but in many cases they're not connected to a story that has something that pulls us as a player, as a, as a person to actually play that story and see where it's going to lead. So when it comes to adding drama in your adventures, it is very, very important that you actually have a very, very strong background. We're not going to talk about how to exactly write the background, we are here to talk specifically about character death and specifically about the flavor that this can add. So moving on to that, just to check my notes real fast, yeah, I wanted to say that basically it's very important to sometimes flesh out, flesh out the stories because giving the DM a guidance, like any sort of guidance, can be extremely important. So for example, if I am going to write, not a dungeon crawl, but let's say something happened in a forest nearby, right, like where the players are, then I do want to give the DM reasons why it happened, why the bad guy did that, did what he did basically, why the villagers care about it, why they care about the, for the forest, what their relationship with it is, and I'm just making this up. I'm, it can be way, way more extensive, it can be way, way more in depth, but in this case, you need at least the simple stuff so that when somebody reads your story, if you if it's just for yourself, then yeah, okay, you make these things up as you go, you can actually make notes and whatnot. But if you're reading if you're writing an adventure that you want to be really good that you, in terms of how people can pick it up and play it, then it needs to be easy to read and easy to understand. And easy to understand in this case means being able to pick it up read a page and be like, okay, I know how this world, this little situation, this little environment that Kelf wrote, or the writer in this case, 
works and I understand why this forest is in peril. <clears throat> I understand why people care about saving it. I understand about all these little things that come with the forest. So let's say that this forest is in, is in peril. Now having said that, just because I wrote, let's say, that the forest is in peril because it has stood for hundreds of years and it's a, it's an icon, it's a symbol of hope or something for the villagers nearby. They have survived uh, many many floods or something by going into the forest when whenever there was some kind of attack or bandits or something else, you know? It can be all, all sorts of things. Now, having said that, you have to remember that not everyone, and I would say probably everyone, is is going to change your story. I don't know a single person that has played one of my adventures. When I hear back stories, I get messages about my adventures and whatnot. I haven't heard a single person that told me that they played my adventure as it was, as it was written. I always get a message that saying basically that, hey, you know, I adapted it to my campaign. I adapted, I changed this little thing. I took this NPC and I did this, I did this. And that really matters. That really, really matters. And Having said that, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't put effort into actually fleshing out the world, as I said. You should really put effort into making NPCs, making stories that add flavor to it. If it's just an empty world with just some encounters, skeletons, goblins, whatever, even fancy monsters, let's say you put tools and aboleths and whatnot, like that still doesn't make it fancy, it doesn't give it the player's reason to go there and kill monsters. You want them to be there and doing something because they care, not just because you invited them over to your house to roll dice. It's way more than that. TTRPGs are way more than that. And I would again, as I said in a past episode, I would again take inspiration from other TTRPGs, not just uh, D&D, because D&D sometimes has some very, very shallow NPCs, like the blacksmith had his daughter kidnapped or something, or his son went missing, or something like that, you know, like it's sometimes the NPCs can be very shallow and we kind of fall into the trap of making things way too simple do not be afraid to make things very elaborate very complicated you will solve it down the line if the players start asking questions sometimes and that's my, one of my favorite things as the end by the way if the players start asking questions I'm like okay you know it could be that I did not have that in my mind but now that they say that it kind of makes sense I'm like maybe you know it could be that but they don't have to know that anyway but when you're writing and when you're delivering an adventure NPCs and all these stories add flavor and it's really important to actually have well fleshed, fleshed out NPCs and well fleshed out environments to actually be able to give someone the world and how you picture it in your head so that they can play it. That being said, you shouldn't spend your entire day writing a whole world around the adventure. For example, let's take one of my very very simple adventures, the Bone King's Tomb. Um, I just remember all that because it has a funny name as well. But basically that is literally picking out the quest in a tavern or the nearby town and just going into a tomb and exploring what, what happened there. But apart from that, I also connected the story of a bounty hunter leading them there so that they have an NPC that helps them. The bounty hunter has a whole story as to why she's doing what she's doing. The bounty hunter does not care as much about the tomb as other people would, but then realizes what is going on there and starts, you know, changing her motives. And with that, the players also get sway to kind of like you know approach the situation of the whole dungeon crawling and looting a little bit differently so it ends up being a simple mission of dungeon crawling and well dungeon delving and just going there to see if we can get loot since others failed into something completely different and understanding a story with a lot of depth behind it and you kind of like halfway through the adventure you're like wow this is you know this is quite the place. This is way more different than what I expected. It's not just, you know, just walls and like, you know, skeletons just jumping at me. There's a little bit more to this, you know? So I'm not going to spoil the adventure. We might dissect it in a future episode, but nonetheless, I want to move on to my most important uh, part for this episode, which is basically character death. And I wanted to add the romance as well, but I think we're going to talk about romance in another episode because that is a lot, uh, that is a lot to uh, take in a lot to talk about. So, character death. I will reference one of my favorite books. I love pulling out books, by the way, on, on, on the videos. It looks fantastic. So anyway, <laughs> I will reference one of my favorite books, Legend of the Five Rings RPG from Fantasy Flight Games. And specifically this book, I love this game. It's one of those games, unfortunately, it's one of those games that unless everybody knows the world really well, you're not going to play it because <laughs> you really need to know the clans and everything. But anyway, why I, why I the reason why I picked it up is 
because on page uh, 95, I believe, or so, uh, I really want to read this. That's why I'm looking for it. So, yeah, part seven of creating a character, death. How should your character die? All proper samurai fully expect to die in the service of their lord, and it is said that every samurai lives at all times three feet from death, the length of a katana blade. However, some deaths have more meaning than others, and there are plenty of samurai whose outward facade of cards hides a deep-seated fear of mortality. How would you like your character to end? Will they fulfill their destiny and join their ancestors in Yomi, the realm of sacred ancestors? Or will their soul be forced to undertake another cycle on the celestial wheel of reincarnation? This has no mechanical implications, but you should keep it in mind. Your GM certainly will. I love this part. And the reason why I love this part is because it involves the players in what is going to happen in their story. Because it gives... It's just like Warlocks in Dungeons and Dragons. You know, when you play a Warlock, it's my favorite class when I'm DMing. It's my favorite class for players to play. Because it gives me so much power over them. It gives me so much power over their actual, their actual stories. And I can do so many things. I can manipulate what they're going to do next by playing their patron and throwing whispers in their heads. So the character death in this case is really important and the reason why how I'm going to... You will see how I'm going to connect these things. The reason why I mentioned it is because involving your characters in the narrative is extremely important. You cannot do that directly when you're writing an adventure. You can do that for the NPCs and you can affect them a little bit. But if you're going to be playing a game with your friends or with your group or whatever, then character death is something to very, very much consider. Because knowing how a player might die or how they would like their character to die, and again, like Legend of the Five Rings does that fantastically well, it can be really important. Maybe they want to die a glorious death. And that doesn't mean that they will have it, but it immediately gives the character a motive, gives them a feeling, gives them a kind of like a personality, you know? And if you're a samurai, if you're living by the Bushido Code, then the Bushido Code, you you're immediately have ways of how you would act in certain situations. Now, having said that, uh, the players get involved very nicely in Tales from a Loop as well, where I wanted to say that because the cooperative DMing happens in other TTRPGs, not so much in D&D, but it is something that you can actually introduce in D&D as well, and I love to do that. In Tales from a Loop, you have the kids who explain, the players themselves are called to explain what happens in their houses, what their families are doing, what their brothers and sisters are doing. These are very important storytelling aspects. It's not all up to the actual DM, the actual DM to do that every time. You can actually have your players be involved and do these things as well. And that can be really cool. It actually tells a much, much cooler story and has the players involved in the game so much more. Now, when it comes to death and... Here we come to the point where I connect the two things. When it comes to NPC death, when it comes to writing about NPC deaths, it is a very dramatic effect. I generally try to avoid it, and I generally try to avoid it because it's a very, very intense element, a very intense aspect in narrative design, a very intense tool, let's, let's call it a tool, a very intense tool to use in narrative design. And that's because the moment it happens, it just completely changes the dynamics um, of how, like, it changes the way that players see certain things, changes the way that the NPC operates, the way that other NPCs operate, it changes the whole dynamic of your games, like if NPCs are so easy, can, can so easily die, or so, you know, can die so difficult, uh, like in such a difficult way, then that really matters. It really sets the tone for your game. So if you put in an adventure, it immediately sets a tone for the adventure as well. In this case, let's say that the bounty hunter in Bone King's Tomb died halfway through the thing. Then suddenly, the whole connection that you had built with the players is gone, and you don't have any more chance to actually build it up unless you introduce a relative or something like that. But at the same time, if you had kept them alive and they were in danger here and there, then you would see how your players actually care about this NPC. If you let them die, you could actually introduce a paragraph where it gets way, way more intense, right? Like where, okay, if you want to add extra drama, and I actually write it exactly like that. <clears throat> if you want to add an extra dramatic flair to your adventure, you can have this character die. That's how I usually write it. I don't actually just kill them. So it is, I would say, an extra dramatic flair. It can really be a fantastic tool, an intense tool nonetheless, but I would generally avoid it. 
I would prefer to first write something that has no character death and then figure out if a character death actually complements the story, actually has a reason to be there. So having said that, the last thing that I want to reference in terms of character death is actually one of my first adventures called The Esteemed House of Cats. The Esteemed House of Cats is a very simple adventure and the main premise of it was basically how, uh, like a house full of cats that are sentient. I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's for free on Dim's Guild, by the way. I'll put a link down below in the um, description of the video. And basically, the mechanic that I want to talk about here is that I put one of the cats, I say that one of the main cats in the house should be played and should be called after a cat that belongs to one of the players. That immediately makes it way more intimate, and that's something that you can actually use in many ways. Uh, I wouldn't use it with humans, I would use it mostly, even with pets it was a little bit intense. I was actually a little bit afraid that, you know, people might react very, um, you know, very negatively towards it. But I tried to keep it as, you know, as kind of like comedic, kind of like, you know, teal in a way. But anyway, it, it went quite well, thankfully. I didn't have any negative reviews. It's mostly... I get a lot of positive reviews for that adventure. But nonetheless, the whole point is that you choose one of the cats and you call it after one of the uh, one of your player's cats. Again, I would not suggest that if you, they, if you don't know the players that well. I tried it with three different groups. All three different groups enjoyed it. But the whole point was that at the end, you could end up killing the cat or actually negotiating with the cat to, you know see how they will atone for their sins basically will they help the adventuring party now move forward and whatnot so there's like all these kinds of things that you can actually um do in order to involve your players even more and again character death avoided i just said that i basically wrote in one of my first adventures but as you can see that was one of my first adventures and i haven't done it since it's a very tricky tool i will call it a tool again because i think it's really a tool and i would yeah i would generally think twice before involving any one of my adventures. Even if the Bound Hunter is in extreme danger, I would still find a way to save her because I think the players should actually care and it's up to you to make them care. If they don't care, then they, you probably did not do a very good job with actually writing the adventure the way that it that it would actually complement the NPC staying alive as well. Or maybe your players are just murder hobos and that just happens. So yeah, you can't really avoid it. But anyway, that's it for today. I talked about a lot of subjects that I do want to expand on in the future. Um, character death is definitely something that will come back and we will talk about uh, players and how they can implement character death in their character creation as well. Um, also we will talk about character death more specifically when I dissect some of my other adventures where some characters actually do die. For example, Murder at the Lodge uh, is an investigation adventure, a murder mystery, and that you know has an inev inevitable character death, that's like the whole point of the adventure. But there, it's actually a way more specific tool, other other than just you know bringing drama to your, to the adventure, to the narrative. So anyway, we'll definitely talk about all of these things. One of my favorite as well, romance. So you can expect that. And yeah, that's it for today. As always, if you want to support me, Patreon is the absolute best way possible to do that. I appreciate all of the feedback and all of the support that I'm getting from all of you guys. I really, really do. And I want to say a big thank you again to all my patrons because none of this would have been possible if it wasn't for you guys. Thank you so much. And other than that, you can find me on all my, on all my socials under Kelfasil. You just Google Kelfasil, you'll find me everywhere. Please do like and subscribe. It does help a lot with the videos. Uh, it, I also I do appreciate all of the comments that you guys are leaving. I really, really do. It's I keep saying thank you, but really, like, if there was no response, I would be like, okay, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing and I don't know if this is working. But clearly... So many people like it. I really, really am happy with that. And I will continue doing it as long as you as you all are, are enjoying the content. You know, I'm losing my words now, so I'm just going to go. Anyway, until next time, may Starlight guide your way, my friends. Bye-bye.